Neil Casey and Zach Woods. Yeah. Get a suggestion of, I guess, just a word or a phrase. Skyline. Say it again. Microphone. 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 Thank Even there, you were needlessly specific geographically, and you stuttered. We can't... Look, you came very highly recommended. It's hard to even get a, a, an audition here. I'm nervous. Okay. Is all. I get nervous. When, when, when I'm under pressure, I fall. I choke. I choke out. Okay. I mean, choke out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're narrating your own joking. <laughs> <laughs> but the groove, you know, like it'll never be worse than this. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is it. Is that your hard sell? This <laughs> <laughs> is the bottom. Every time you, I hear the horns come, you get Lakshmi sing the toss. <laughs> Toss, toss over to me for a okay, little trade secret. Lakshmi Singh is not a team player. She's not, if you're looking for her to alley oop you, you're never going to make that dumb. Well, I'd be the guy. I'm a charming guy. I'm a charmer. I, tra I went to the Columbia School of Broadcasting and Journalism. Broadcast journalism. <laughs> a, minor, a minor in the radio, uh, the radio sciences and audio delivery. I am made. I'm made for this. I'm made for this. I'm not gonna do worse than <laughs> The clearest communicating you've been doing has been with your hands. <laughs> it's not useful to us in radio and also I don't know, has this tactic worked for you in the past of selling yourself by reassuring people that they've seen the worst? I went for a professor. I, on a first assignment I had, I was sitting and uh, for the professor, I, I engaged in... It's like listening to refrigerator magnet words. <laughs> Utterances and and and, and uh, uh, remembered phrases so strung together until my index. I got my index card and I pressed them all out. <laughs> I don't think radio is for you. I think panic slam poetry. <laughs> Listen, you seem like a good guy, but when it comes time to deliver here, you have to deliver. You don't even have to deliver that well, to be honest. I mean, you have to. You're selling yourself short. I remember when you took the microphone in 1996. That was just. They didn't show up. Yeah. Terry Gross was having a hysterectomy. <laughs> <laughs> there were complications, and she couldn't make it to It was seamless. It was a seamless transition. I mean, it wasn't seamless. It was seamless. <laughs> I did the best I could under dire circumstances. No, it was a seamless transition. You interviewed know, Robert Zemeckis, which you were born to do. <laughs> <laughs> You're 
producer, you know? Yeah, I'm not supposed to be in front of that. No, yeah, no one wants to hear my... Behind it. <laughs> See? Oh, no. <laughs> in front of the camera, behind the mic. In front of the camera, behind the mic. Day one. Say, so do you want to be in audio delivery radio? <laughs> or are you a newsman, an anchor, and in front of the camera, it's like, day one, they say, that's the orientation. <laughs> <laughs> say everybody, decide now. For all in the auditorium, the big gym they have up at Columbia. They have a big gym? <laughs> they have you all the broadcast students get into a gym? And they say, day one, they say, choose now. Are you going for radio, print, or TV? Three different camps, three different... It's like Harry Potter. <laughs> Sorted into your respective houses. Is that in the book? Yeah, that's in the book. <laughs> I'm responsible for familiarizing myself with pop culture, although I read those recreation books. <laughs> I gave them when my mom. My mom was into the Harry Potters. I gave her, I gave her a couple over the Christmases. <laughs> I'm hoping now that you celebrate an unconventional holiday. That you're in some sort of odd Christianity where you have several Christmases and that wasn't just another slip of the tongue. It's like verbal vaudeville. Just like slipping on banana peels. It's chaotic to the point of being almost implausible. That's not, That's not a fair assessment. That's unfair. Look. I call your fair I call your fundamental fairness. <laughs> <laughs> question. Just stop, it makes sense. Yeah, stop. <laughs> what you said so far makes sense, don't say more. <laughs> Listen, our security guard keeps cutting his nails at the desk, and frankly, I want to let him go. Now there might be a big <laughs> down there. You check people in, no one's coming in here. For nail cutting? <laughs> <laughs> he clips his nails at the desk. He should be wa I mean, you know, he should be wa It's unsanitary and it's creepy. Well, you're it's within safe. your rights. You're within your rights. But that, I, the year, that makes you, like, that makes you a hard-nosed some, some bitch. <laughs> You're incorporating regionalisms now? You don't have a hard enough time with standard American English. You have to do, have to do Appalachian slang. I'm fluent in the language of our great country. A national language. English. Listen. There's a national radio station. You guys get paid top dollar. We don't. <laughs> Subsidiary public radio stations to buy your program. I get paid thirty-five thousand dollars a year. It's not nothing, but it's not top dollar. Where do I live? You live in DC on thirty-five G's. Yeah, I live well. Technically, Alexandria. <laughs> <laughs> you brushing your shoulders <laughs> that, The fact that I live in Alexandria, that makes you do a Jay-Z thing? <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'm responsible for familiarizing myself with popular culture. <laughs> Listen, I tried to offer you a job and you're criticizing me? I just, I wouldn't take a man's job and just been fired. Clipping his toenails, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say toenails? No, he clips his fingernails. Clip <laughs> his toenails. I would have taken a really firm. <laughs> okay, you know what? I've got six minutes till the next interview. If you can wow me right now, I'll tell you what. We do this. We call this. Savage Gauntlet, and what it is is it's <laughs> the hardest NPR copy that we've <laughs> ever had to do. There's alliterations. <laughs> There's foreign countries that you have to pronounce in a in sense. Not. Control my own. 
Say it again. Control my own with the red button? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are listening to all things considered. This is a Quinley Penumbra. <laughs> Did you say your name is Quimley Penumbra? <laughs> Sirius Johnson, Lakshmi <laughs> and your little baby boy, little Quimby. <laughs> Got a story that I'm working on for tomorrow. It's a story that I'm working on for tomorrow. Mom. You know they want it. You know when they, you were born in the hospital. They wanted me to let you die. <laughs> and I said, no. I said, no, this child, I see greatness stamped all over this child. And if you can't see it, why you have no business being a doctor or a nurse. Why let me? <laughs> well, you were very weak. You were born prematurely. And I said it's viable. At that point, your gender was indeterminate. <laughs> one of these nurses, one of these kind-faced nurses, pulled me into a consult room and she said, sometimes it's better to just let things go. And I knew what she meant. And I said, no. And I said, absolutely not. Listen to that voice or girl's voice. <laughs> Listen to the fight in that voice. And sure enough, you were hooked up to an incubator for two and a half years. <laughs> sure enough. You always said I looked cute when I was a baby. You did in a sci-fi kind of way. <laughs> A little concave nose lump. Yeah. My black eyes. Yeah, you had always black eyes. The air bruised them. <laughs> Jaundiced skin by two webbed fingers. <laughs> oh, Mommy. Mommy. I made it, Mommy. <laughs> lives out in Alexandria. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, 
I'm looking at your mast receding into the horizon. And I'm about as happy as a harbor can be. <laughs> I'm going to get an apartment. I'm going to move out. <laughs> I don't want the tablets to get a hold of it. <laughs> New NPR news reader lives at home with mom. <laughs> Be a laughing stock. <laughs> I'll be fine. I wish you'd go on a date. You know what happens when I put myself out into that world. You know. I'm disappointed or I'm disappointing. <laughs> My son said I should get out, so here we are. I signed up for, uh, you know, J date. And, uh, <laughs> technically, we're uh, not Jewish, but uh, I found that I have an affinity for Jewish men. So. Notice that all of your profile pictures were of house plants. Oh. <laughs> I call them my book group. <laughs> my son will buy me a book and then I'll read it. And uh, plants actually thrive on conversation. If you talk to a plant, it's a type of emotional fertilizer and they sprout ever stronger. Ever well, I've heard that. that. That's actually why I decided to go on a date with you, despite you not having many descriptions of yourself in the profile or any photographs at all. I have a little bit of a green thumb myself. You do? I do. And I found that to be the case. You converse with your plants. You talk to your plants? Of course. They might not understand your words, but they appreciate the attitude. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what first interested me in you. That picture of you. We're standing in a sunroof of the limousine. Oh, yes. <laughs> I said, this guy, he knows about fancy things, but he knows how to have fun. <laughs> Quite an evening, I was going to the new casino in Chester. What? Chester, Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't go to Chester. I don't. No, it's not very convenient. <laughs> but yes, uh, some friends of mine. Um, we're in another limo. We had two limos. Eight people each in them. And I noticed uh, one of my friends, in the limo over ahead, Popped his head out of the sunroof, oh. being naturally somewhat of a follower, imitator. <laughs> I popped my head out the top of the limousine, and he took a picture of me. I was wondering how they got that angle. <laughs> he sent it to me over an email, and I posted it on my JDA profile, saying, hey, you know, now I was in front of a computer. Right. <laughs> and a message received. <laughs> my God, you're stunning. <laughs> what do you mean? You're a beautiful woman. Oh. Sure. <laughs> Has no one said that to you? People have reacted with surprise. But never it was so positive. Well, I find you very exotic. Really? Yes, quite. Oh, oh. that's so nice. And you look your age. And I mean that as a compliment. You look as you are. You're not trying to look different. I have no respect for anyone who doesn't look as they should. <laughs> I'm scared to dress different. <laughs> Don't follow your instincts. Every morning as you look in the mirror, follow your heart. I do. You seem to be as you are. It's hard for me to imagine how you would. <laughs> and you, you. Well, this is uh, this is my house. Good behind the night. Perhaps we should turn on the radio. <laughs> Olympia, this is really <laughs> <put them. laughs> What is the oldest turtle in the zoo? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> That's my 
my boy. <laughs> As it turns out, the zookeepers keep records. <laughs> yeah. The oldest turtle, 62 years old. <laughs> Same age as my sweet mother. <laughs> this is grimly put up now. <laughs> newspaper every morning. I wake up at 5 in the morning, I make a pot of coffee, and I read the newspaper from 6 o'clock till 6.45, and then I usually take a walk or a shower. <laughs> <laughs> well, the radio's fine, I suppose. The radio's fine, I suppose. I'm sorry, am I offended? Just tell me something, because I don't know if I can go on from this. <laughs> Is this as bad as it gets? <laughs> 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 